Hi everyone, today I'm going to do a video on how I build a permanent pier for my equatorial mounts. My name's Glenn, and you're watching Astro Bloke. Hi everyone, so today's video is about two piers that I'm going to be building for my new observatory. Um, I built a pier before and I do have a video from that pier build and it's basically exactly the same design because it worked so well, it was, it was brilliant, um, but I've gone for it to be much beefier, much bigger, so um, I just felt that the column before it was absolutely fine, it, it, it worked perfectly, but I wanted it to be a lot thicker. So I think I went with 150mm initially. This time I've gone for 250mm diameter. Um, <clears throat> so the parts that I use for my pier build are, I use um, ducting, tubular ducting for uh, air conditioning. So that's like a steel tube and it can come in one and a half metre, three metre lengths. Strangely, it's no more expensive than a cardboard tube for forming a concrete uh, column. So for me, I just think it's a nicer finish and it's a surface that I can paint. But you can use the cardboard tube and just have a concrete pillar um, or you could find something else that will form the shape. Uh, it's entirely up to you. So I've dug some nice big holes. Um, they've got some rebar in the bottom and gravel and they're all going to be cemented later this week and then cementing the tube but of course I need these ready, uh, the pier adapters at the top before I put the cement in because I need to set these into the wet cement so that it goes off and then holds these firmly in place. So the parts that I use is I've got two pier adapters and I got them from Altair Astro. So I bought the EQ6 adapter initially, which is this one here. It doesn't come with these uh, bits on the bottom. These are things that I've added, and I'll talk about those in a second. And you may also have to buy yourself um, a North Polar Alignment pin, um, which just bolts in, or you can just, I initially just put uh, an M10 threaded bolt in there. So, um, I had one of these, these fit the Altair Astro Pier, so they're spaced out with the drill holes, so I knew when I bought the EQ8, the drill holes were in exactly the same place because this fits their pier as well, so that was great because it meant I could just swap these over on my other pier when I bought my EQ8. But now I'm going to actually have two piers, one for the EQ6 and one for the EQ8, so I have two. So initially I bought some round uh, discs, I bought this off eBay actually, still cut discs, they're not too expensive, only about five pounds, and I drilled it out. Now that was challenging, especially the large hole in the middle for cabling, extremely hard to drill out. Um, when I got the second plate, I had two plates anyway, I had a second plate, I actually, uh, through my friend Simon of Simon's Astro, he knows a guy at uh, an engineering firm, and basically they took the two plates and they just dr drilled this one for me because they've got much better tools than I have. So um, you really need pedestal drills and things like that to uh, do a good job. So um, I've got the two plates and these are for strength, and what I've done is I've actually bought some Perspex cut discs which I'm going to use to top off the piers. So, so that there's no hole that you can see down into all the concrete. Now, these are 300 mil wide. The pier columns are 250. So it'll be a nice little overlap and it's like a nice little finished cap. So all you get on the top is the pier adapter on its little legs, just stuck there. And these legs are just so that you've got the clearance to get your hand under to do the nut up underneath. Um, to secure the pier to the adapter. What these are, are actually M8 to M10 uh, thread adapters. Really solid, they polish up quite nice, so I'll give these a bit of a clean. These ones need a clean, as does this uh, uh, pier adapter need a, a polish up as well. But basically, 
<coughs> the M8 bolt threads on one side and then what I've got is four lengths, well eight in total, but four lengths of M10 rod which then screws into the bottom of that. But what we will do is the plate will be in between that and that just was the finishing for the top of my old piers. So I'm going to reuse these because these are nice and strong and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill the perspex discs so that these are the finishing plates but these will be underneath to give it the strength. That will be bolted on top and that will be the finished top of the pier. So uh, on the cabling side I just wanted to show you this quickly. I've got some little bit of drainage pipe. I've got two, uh, l they're not the sharp right angles, they're like the sweeping right angles. And this will run down the centre of the pier. I'm going to drill a hole, excuse me, I'm going to drill a hole on the side of the pier at the bottom and the cables then can enter the bottom of the pier, run up the centre and neatly come out at the top and just attach to what we want. So that's got to go into and then we put the concrete in. What I normally do with that is I have the pipe sticking out the top and sticking out the side, and then once all the concrete's gone on, I'll just cut, cut the excess off. So, what I need to do here is drill this plate to get these Perspex discs ready, and then we, the next job will be just to put everything together to make sure it looks nice, and then of course it'll be cementing the piers, and then getting these set into that cement for everything to go off. Right, let's get this drilled. And what we're looking to do here is that looks good. Okay. So uh, that's it drilled with the uh, pier adapter sitting on top. So you've got the, this nice finished plate which will sit over the edges of the steel tube that I've bought. Underneath you've got the strength of the steel plate so there's not going to be any flex in this top whatsoever. Um, that'll be bolted up nice and tight. Um, and then I've got the um, pipe, my little drainage pipe here which if I, if I do a little negotiation with the door here it'll be long enough for me to show you if I get the other disc up here that we've got a nice clearance there for that to go through so that'll just sit like that and I can run all of my cabling through that and that will sit nice and neatly in the middle of the concrete so now that that's done what we'll do is uh, we'll go and offer it up to the tube up the garden and see if it all looks okay and fits nice. Right, let's go and have a look. Okay, so these are the tubes I bought. And uh, I've got some rebar pushed in the ground there that might need to go down a little bit further. Um, it's a good 600 mil deep, 600 by 600 by 600. Um, it's coming up to the bottom of where the concrete slab's going to be, so you mostly wouldn't need the shuttering that I've done. 
you can just do it flush to the ground but I've brought it up so I can have real good thickness so this tube will sit in the center there'll be some rebar across the bottom to get that really set in the concrete nicely and then the pier adapter will sink into the concrete all the way down and be something like that and it will give a finish that looks well, north is about that way so it will give you a finish that looks a bit like that I'll bring you in show you So what I'll mostly do is actually paint the tube in a black. I'll have a gloss black top and then a nice silver topped pier adapter above that. So that's the two pier tops constructed. Uh, looking quite good. I think these are gonna work extremely well. Got my EQ6, my EQ8 adapters all ready for the the uh, the actual uh, equatorial mounts themselves. So the next job is to get up the garden, mix some concrete, get it, them tubes set in the ground so that we've got our absolute firm base for the piers and then these are gonna get inside. Before I put these in, I need to cut this pipe <clears throat> to the right length from the top here all the way down and have it sticking out the side of the uh, pier. So I need to get my uh, big drill bit and drill a couple of big holes where the bottom of the pier is gonna be near the floor so that I can get access for my cabling to go in, run up, and then it can come out under this gap and to the piers. Right, so that's it. I'll see you at the uh, work site and we'll get this concrete in done. Right, catch you later. So this piece of wood is actually the floor level. I'm gonna have my pier inlets wires going this side. Um, so, let's just put these in. And I can cut these to the length I want afterwards. Right, just get my pier tops. So I'm thinking of a power supply, main leads running across and then they'll go into the two piers 
from either side so I can walk around the outside of both. So what I need to do now is get some rebar and type one at the bottom of these pits so they're ready for the cement to go in and then I've got to put some wooden shutter in to hold those piers in an upright position and make sure that I can get those two uh, pier adapters so that the equatorial mounts will be facing north um, and then I'm ready to mix my concrete so the next job will be to barrow up a whole ton sack of ballast up here ready for the mixing I've got a cement mixer being hired tomorrow to mix it all up uh, and get it all in all right we'll uh, get these set and then uh, go from there right let's go <laughs> Okay, so it's the next day after yesterday's long cementing session that was so long uh, we ended up running the battery out on the camera and why the time lapse ended should uh, quite quickly. But um, the piers are in and here they are and I'm really pleased with them. They're nice and upright um, and I do believe that both the uh, pins are facing north. On the EQ8 it's at the back. And on the EQ6, it's at the front. Got a little bit of cleaning up to do with the dry cement, but that's fine. The cement's going off quite nicely. I'm gonna leave it another day before I unbolt the uh, pier adapters. The rods then should be nice and set in the concrete. I'm just hoping that everything is pointing north because boy, did I have some fun with the compass. It just one minute it would face that way a bit and then that way a bit and it was, oh, I think it was just interacting with the metal work that's around here. I'm really pleased with how it's all gone. If you've got any questions on any of the uh, quantities I've used, dimensions I've used, please just ask uh, in the uh, description or comment section I'll be more than happy to answer the questions I've tried to cover everything um, but it's always difficult it's easy to forget something so um, just a very quick one I wanted the uh, pier bases to be 600 by 600 by 600 um, but they've actually ended up a little bit bigger they're 600 by 600 and they're about 750 deep um, and they are slightly proud of the ground but that's because the level at the end where the observatory is going to go is slightly raised and as you can see I've got a lot of gravel and stuff packed in here which I've got to compact down smash up smaller and I've got some type one to go over the top and compact and then the concrete base will actually come from here and it'll be about five inch deep across and it'll go across the top so what the plan is is to put some fiberglass insulation around the tube and on top of the concrete and then polythene over that and what that will do is when the concrete's poured it'll compress that but they'll leave about a quarter of an inch uh, isolation gap between the two parts of concrete so there won't be any uh, problems of vibration getting through um, really strong mix I've gone for an actual four to one mix um, so yeah, it's uh, a very hard strong mix I, what I used in my last pier so should work really well all I've got to do now is uh, cut the pipes to the right length so they're not protruding anymore and then I can feed cabling in and I want to paint the actual steel tube so I'm gonna clean up all the last bits of dry cement and then they'll be undercoated and then I'll do them in a colour most probably black actually because I've got the gloss black top and I'm going to polish up 
the uh, pier adapters and the stems so everything's nice and shiny. Um, and I'll mostly just do the pillars in black. I did them in a hammerite black last time, so I'll mostly go for something like that. It's, it's nice and hard wearing. But I'm really pleased that the piers are both in. Um, and uh, the next job is to prepare the ground, get the slab down. Once the slab's down, I can then start building. So the first thing will be to build the office control room. Once that's built, is then going to be, because um, that's an actual uh, kit um, that I bought, um, but the observatory is going to be a bespoke build from, from scratch, just from wood frame um, and build it up. So uh, that's just going to be a project uh, that's going to just uh, develop as I build it. So obviously I'll document it all, um, but again, just to reiterate, if I haven't covered anything that you want to know, please leave um, a message for me in the comment section. I'll be more than happy to uh, give you as much information as I can. And uh, I'd just like to thank you all for your wonderful support. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so and clicking the like button and the notification bell so that you know when I get some updated videos out. But until next time, I'd like to wish you all clear skies.